All right, so we'll start things off. Right. You just returned from the combine. What was your biggest takeaway in terms of positions you guys may look to address through the draft? So the cool thing about this draft, it's really a good draft. It's really talented. Uh, when you look to the positions, I'm not going to you know, get into specific players, but uh, the O-line group was really good. It's really deep. The, the, the receivers were really a fun group to watch, as were the DBs. And you know, the, the, the big guys on the on the other side of the D-lineman, you don't always have a lot of guys, but there's some good players out there. And um, the middle backwards were fun to watch. There was a lot of speed out there, and uh, it's going to be a good draft. So, so I'm excited about it. Now, at the end of last year, you told us that you and Mike Tomlin at the end of the season sat down and kind of planned a little bit of a roadmap for 2023. Mm -hmm. What does that roadmap for 2024 look like? Uh, it's 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 a planning process. It's still in effect. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out the pro day stuff and obviously the roster There's a lot going on as soon as, you know, we're done here, I'm heading back upstairs. We're in the draft room watching film on, on a lot of guys. So the, the, the preparation for 24 is on. Do you envision by this time next week, agreeing to terms with a free agent quarterback? Uh, that's a good question. I would say, you know, right now we, we always carry three quarterbacks on the roster and I would, I think it's safe to assume that we'll do the same. We usually take four to camp. But right now we have one quarterback under contract and um, there's, there's work to be done. So I, I would say that we're looking at all options and all avenues um, to address those open positions. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see where it goes. But I, I've said this for the last uh, couple of years since I got this job. The competition is really important for me regardless of position and that doesn't exclude the quarterback position. So. Uh, we're looking forward to bringing some good football players. You can't ever have enough good football players at every position. Now, of course, you mentioned that competition. What, in your mind, is the ideal way to create that quarterback competition that you mentioned that Mike Tomlin has mentioned at the end of the season? Sure, you just bring in good players, and um, you know, good players come in different uh, sizes and shapes and different experiences in life, and uh, you just bring good players in, let them compete. I'm a believer that regardless of what you uh, what you do in life, Jenna. Um, you know, if, as long as you embrace competition, it's going to make you better. So just bring good players in here and guys that want to compete and let it all happen on the football field. I think after the end of this past season mm -hmm. and kind of leading into this offseason, there are kind of a lot of polarizing opinions on Kenny Pickett externally. I'm sure there's a ton of external noise that you guys aren't hearing all the time, but little bits and pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. But internally, what are the feelings we, on Kenny Pickett? Yeah, we have, we have uh, confidence in, in, in Kenny. And I think that the, the cool thing about that this year is we're Arthur, we have a new office coordinator, new quarterback coach, and uh, it's been cool to kind of get to understand and learn about what their vision is for the offense and, you know, how they, how they would utilize uh, Kenny. Um, having said that, you know, we just talked about it, Jenna, that, uh, you know, competition is going to be important. We're going to bring in some players, you know, how we're going to acquire them, we'll see, and uh, we'll let those guys go out there and compete. Now, along those same lines, too, with Kenny, what mm -hmm. tangibles do you need to see from him under Arthur Smith's new offense through camp as you guys are working to cement him as the starter? I, I think, you know, it's going to be a, a work in progress. I, I, you know, we're, we're understanding the vision. They're, those guys are working on getting to know us and meeting uh, Arthur and, and the rest of the new offensive staff, and they're putting a game plan together, and then, you know, they're molding it, and we'll, we'll, we'll have guys here to compete and see where it goes. Salary cap going up yeah. a little bit. How does that change your approach specifically, especially as you guys head into free agency this week? Yeah, so the, the obviously the bigger the salary cap, the better. Um, although it is relative, you know, it doesn't. I, you know, it would be different if you told me the salary cap was going up just for us and not everybody else. But the okay. reality is, it goes it goes up for all 32 teams, and um, you know, it's 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 good to have. It gives a little bit of a cushion. But we we've always found ways. You know, if there's a player that we want to acquire and we have to do certain things. You know, we'll, we'll find a way to do it. Now, obviously, you guys got rid of Mason Cole. How do you plan to address center, especially knowing that it is a really yeah. deep draft class? All options are on the table. There's some, you know, good free agents. So the window for talking to those guys is until next week, but there's some good free agents. Um, there's been some conversations about uh, some trades and uh, the draft. Like you said, there's some good players. There's some good centers in the draft, so center-capable guys. But I'll, I'll say this, too. Our, on our offense, one of the things that I've always – made a, uh, a priority with our offensive linemen is for them to have some versatility. And I'm confident that we have guys that provide that type of versatility if we need to. And, you know, we saw some center play from uh, Nate Herbig, which was really encouraging. And there's other guys that have done it in the past. 
How do you guys kind of, with that position specifically, to kind of weigh a little bit, you know, bringing in a veteran, someone who's a proven leader, especially at a position that leadership is so important, versus a little bit mm -hmm. of the youth and the rawness of someone coming through the draft? You know, the, the center, center position, there's a high standard here, as you know. I mean, we, I got spoiled. I was around Marquise Pouncey and Jeff Harding. So that, that was my time here. And obviously, Damani Dawson, there's plenty of great centers here. And uh, so there's a high standard. So we, we owe it to ourselves to look at everything to, uh, to try to find the next great cent Steeler center. What, in your mind, are the biggest pressing needs of this team right now? That's a good question, Jenna. I, I would say, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're always looking to get good players at every position. So, um, you know, if, if there's ever an opportunity to, to improve our, our uh, specific position room, we're, we're going to look into it. Now, you guys are in a conference with two of the best quarterbacks in the league. And then not only, or division, not only that, you go, to the, you go out to the conference, you face, you see Josh Allen, you yeah. see Patrick Mahomes. How do you guys not only compete with these guys, how do you look to compete with these teams, but get past these teams? So I'll, I'll say this. Um, I think there's three good quarterbacks, and aside, you know, the, for the all three teams have really good quarterbacks in our division, and the AFC is loaded with quarterbacks. I mean, there's no running from it. So we have to find a way to, whether you know, use our talents and uh, good coaching and bringing in good players and find a way to beat those guys. You know, we we sat at home watching the Super Bowl like the majority of America, like the majority of the world, and um, yeah, it was it's torture to watch that you know we that's where we want to be we want to be on that stage we want people watching us and um, we're not there yet and we have to find ways to do it one final one for you there's obviously a lot of talk about the draft potentially coming to Pittsburgh yeah. in the next couple of years mm -hmm. or so for you as a GM though what would that mean to have a draft here and be able to draft basically in front of your fans How, I mean it would just be Jenna it would be awesome I mean just the there is no I'm confident in saying that and I'm biased because I'm, I'm, I live in Pittsburgh and I love it here. There is no better city to host the draft. It's long overdue than Pittsburgh. Um, I was involved in early conversations when we talked about it, you know, a few years ago, and um, I, I think it would be great. And I, I think the moment we have it here, hopefully we'll get it. The moment we have it here, we're going to put on such a good show that the NFL is going to want to come back. I'll tell you what, it would be great to send someone down to wherever the draft is, pick them up and bring them to the facility the night of the draft. That would be pretty sweet. Oh, well, Omar, thank you so much for Thanks, your time. Thanks. We appreciate it. Thanks for your time. It. Thanks for coming down. Thank, thank you. you.